Hey everybody, it's Brian, and welcome to the 108th Qt tutorial with C++ and GUI programming. Um, if my voice starts cracking, I have to apologize. Everybody here is coming down with colds, and I really feel like I'm coming down with one too. Um, be sure to visit my website, www.voidrealms.com, and hold on, my cat. This cat, I swear, every video, every video, cat, go do something else. www.voidrealms.com. Um, you can get tutorials. You know, every tutorial that I do, I try to put the uh, the video plus the source code out here. Now, I did uh, have it on a host that crashed. So, if by chance you're following along and you come across one of these tutorials where, well, the source code just isn't out there, do me a favor, zip it up and email it to me, and I'll uh, review it. And if it's legit, I'll throw it out on my website for everybody else to download too. Uh, most of them do have the source though, but there are a couple where the files are just gone, and I haven't had a chance to go back through and look. But you can sort, search, filter, whatever you want to do. Um, by the way, this website's written, written in Yi, a new tutorial uh, that we've started doing with the Yi framework. You see we've got video one out there. Also got some programs I've written, some source code that's out there, free of charge, of course. Um, for example, a full FTP server I wrote in C++ with Qt. It's got some bugs in it. I haven't had a chance to iron it out. Some projects I'm working on. If you're so inclined, you can donate, but please don't feel obligated. Um, this site's 100% run by your donations and how to contact me. Um, easiest ways by email. I get a massive amount of email. I've had to turn my spam filter on so if I don't get back to you either you know it got gobbled up by the spam filter or you're just you know I haven't gotten to you yet. I'm sorry. Alright so um, I thought we had talked about this at one point but I guess we didn't. Uh, Marcus wrote in and said Brian I need a better way to work with the command line. I know you know these tutorials are about cute and gooey etc etc but command line help me out so we're gonna talk about the Q text stream and we're gonna make a pretty beefy little command line um, basically we're gonna take command line and throw it on steroids here so let me uh, get rid of my cat here come on kitty go away I love you but go maybe it's just because I had Arby's a few minutes ago but um, alright so we're going to actually create a new project and we're going to create a console application now why have we been focusing on console apps? Console, geez, console apps. Been focusing on them because well it's a lot easier than uh, mucking around with the GUI. We are going to get back into GUI programming, don't worry about that. I'm just letting you know that hey, you know, sometimes you gotta stick with the basics here. So this is a basic command line application. We run this, not a whole lot happens. On some operating systems you can see yourself type, on others you can't. We want something that works consistently across all operating systems. And I know some of you out there are like, well, you can just do the, you know, using, I hope if I can spell it, using, namespace, wow, I really cannot spell today, that's embarrassing, std, and then do your standard cnc out. You can do that, but it's not very object oriented and it can be kind of cumbersome to work with, especially when you get into larger projects. So we're going to add new, we're going to choose a class, and we're just going to call this command line. And I swear I did something very similar to this. Maybe I didn't, but we're going to inherit Q object. And then we're going to finish and get our header here. Now we're going to include a few things. So let's include Q thread. I do know that I wrote this a while back and I wrote it because well the command line was really just making me mad it just it wasn't consistent it wasn't working great on all operating systems and let's see here we're gonna include Q text stream <clears throat> like I said I have to apologize if I'm clearing my throat or anything like that it's it's just like the creeping plague has invaded this house and everybody's getting sick. So hopefully I uh, hopefully I'll last through this video. Come on, kitty, you're you're really being a drag today. This cat's um, 20 years old, so she's getting kind of clingy. I think it's I think that time's approaching, if you know what I mean. Which I'll be very sad. I love this cat. All right, so we're gonna make our signal on read line. And then we're going to make a few slots here. And we're going to say void read stdn. So we're going to read the standard input. 
and then we're going to void handle the standard input. Qstring line. Whoops. And let's make a private section. Qthread mthread. So we're going to make this multi threaded, and you'll see why in a little bit. So just to review, we've got our Q object we're inheriting. We got our Q thread, our trusty Q debug, Q text stream, and then we have a signal of on read line and two slots, read standard in and handle standard in. And of course, we're making a thread. So we're going to jump into the actual implementation right after we do this. Told you I was getting a little loopy. So it's cold meds. All right. So now we've got our beautiful code file here that we can start fleshing out. First thing we're going to do is we're going to say this move to thread and we're going to give it a reference to mthread. So what are we doing and why are we doing this? Well, we're taking this object, this current class, and we're going to move it to a thread. That's the cute's documented correct way of handling threads is you'll create a thread, create an object, and then move that object to the thread. And then you will start the thread. So this class will be instantly multi-threaded. This class will run inside of its own independent thread. That can be very handy for when you get into looping situations. And we'll talk about that here in just a second. First thing we need to do is connect our signals and slots. So we're going to take our thread, we're going to take the signal of, you guessed it, started. So when this thread starts, we're going to say this, this slot, and we're going to read the standard input. So as soon as this thread starts, this guy right here, we're going to read the standard input down here. So we're going to start just, you know, this loop of reading the standard input. Then we're going to say connect. And we're going to say this. Come on, kitty. Seriously. This signal. This cat loves me to death. I think Arby's is the only thing keeping it alive. And we're going to say slot. And of course, you guys did handle standard input. So what we're doing here is we're creating the object. Or I should say, once the object's created, we're moving it to a thread, um, connecting our signals and slots, and we're starting that thread. This is where we're going to actually read the input from the standard input. Boy, that was a mouthful. Qtex stream. Anybody out there watch Breaking Bad? It's a TV show in America. Oh my gosh, I just watched the, the finale for it. I'm a little behind the times, and I'm, uh, I'm just blown away. That show is just awesome. Now, we're going to read the standard in. STDN is a variable in Qt which refers to the standard input. So what we're doing is we're making a Qtext stream and we're creating it with a reference to, or I should say, a, a copy of the standard input variable. And then we're going to just make a Qstring called line and we're going to say, you guessed it, stream read line. And then we're going to emit our signal on read line with the line variable and then we're going to just loop back into ourself here so what this little function here is doing is it's saying all right as soon as this function starts which is when the thread starts we're going to create a stream with the standard input we're going to read line and then once we have a line of text we're going to admit our signal I'm sorry emit our signal and then we're just going to loop back into ourselves. So this is just a loop over and over and over and over and over. You could easily do this within a do loop, but I like doing this. It's, it just seems a little cleaner to me. Um, sometimes I've had issues with programs where I do things like this in a do loop where they'll actually just lock up and I cannot for life me figure out what's going on. Um, so to me, this just seems like a little bit easier. That I can add more functionality, but you could definitely do a do loop. Um, I know I'm going to get some uh, some hate mail saying, why didn't you do that in the do loop? It's the correct way of doing it. 
So that's why. Now we're going to do our handle. Now remember we've subscribed to this. Our handle input is waiting for the on read line signal. So as soon as this is emitted, it's going to go into here. So we're going to just say Q debug. Ah, accidentally hit caps lock. Q debug. And we're just going to say line. What? I'm getting all sorts of interruptions. My phone's going. Uh, some of my friends want me to jump into World of Warcraft and start playing with them. So we're just going to echo this back out here. Now, we'll go back into our main, and we're going to say include command line. And we're just going to say command line CLI. So, what we've done here is we've created an instance of this as soon as the program starts up. It's going to take itself and move it to a thread. Connect signal of slots, start the thread, and it's going to sit here in a loop reading the line. This is why you do it on a thread. This guy right here, read line. This is another loop. Inside of this little function, read line, it's just looping and it's waiting and it's reading that standard input. Think of it as like a little gear turning. It's just going to sit there and wait and wait and wait until the user presses the enter button. So if you don't do this whole thing in a thread, your program's going to get to this and stop until somebody hits the enter button. So if you're processing a file or reading sockets or doing something else, it won't work. Your program's going to just stop. So you take this whole class and move it to its own thread as soon as it starts. That way your other classes can do whatever they want. We have our signals so that we can have other classes that we create subscribe to it. And we're just using this handle standard end just to verify that uh, our signal slot architecture here is working. It'll run just fine without that handle standard in. So if we'll just say test, it'll echo it back, test. So how would you actually write to the standard output? Let's see here. Let's say void write std out. Let's call this qString line. So now we're going to write the standard output. Well, you know me, I'm a copy and paste junkie, so we're just going to do this. We're going to change it from standard in to standard out. And then we can just treat it like C out. So to test this, we'll just say, OK. You entered line. And we can get rid of QDebug. Um, some of you have been wondering why I use QDebug. Well, QDebug is very helpful when you're debugging your application. You see down here, debug. Um, a lot of times when you switch to release, your QDebug messages go away. And you can actually set, I believe, you can set different levels of QDebug messages that go out. Something we might talk about in future tutorials here. So there's your right standard output which you could, because we made this a slot, you can call this from other classes too. Save all. And if everything goes good, it doesn't explode. And we'll say, this is a test. You entered, this is a test. So, just to recap for this tutorial, <clears throat> excuse me, my throat's really dry. We've handled standard in, standard out, how to read and write, without using the C in, C out that you see in a million books, you know, the typical hello world application. We're moving it to a thread so that we're not stuck waiting for a line input like most applications are. Um, this will, because we haven't really made any pointers, we don't have to really worry about memory management. It's nice and neat. And it's all using the Qt architecture. Any questions, comments, concerns? All right, I wish you were here to ask them. Anyways, this is Brian. That's all for this tutorial. My throat's getting really dry, so I'm going to go take some cough medicine, and I hope to see and hear from you soon.